Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If everyone could please stand and get ready for praise and worship. Hallelujah. We have so much to be thankful for on today. Hallelujah. The first Sunday in the new year. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is going to be a great year. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Everybody clap your hands.
this morning. Hallelujah for waking us up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for healing our bodies. Huh? Hallelujah for saving our souls. Hallelujah. Saving our families. Hallelujah. We thank you and we bless your name, Jesus. And on today we say thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Am I on? Oh, okay, there we go. All right. Happy New Year's to everyone. Hallelujah. So good to see everyone. It is the first Sunday of the year. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at someone saying you're in the right place. What a better place to be than in the house of the Lord. In the house of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I know it's a little chilly for Southern California, but you know, the sun's out, it's bright, it's shining. You know, there's a lot of places in the world that can't say that right now. So if you didn't come today, I'm just going to tell on you. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I'm talking about it was too cold. California, y'all are a piece of work. Woo, Lord Jesus. Amen, amen. But like that song and the praise and worship team sing, hasn't he been good to you? He's been good to you. In spite of it all, he's been good to you. Amen? Praise God. Well, you can take a seat for a moment. We thank God for the praise and worship team. Uh, <clears throat> how many of you were with us on uh, watch night, New Year's Eve? Raise your hand. Well, praise the Lord. What a time. What, do we have not a great time? They are Holy Ghost time. Uh, now, uh, I'm sure they've already started off. If you were here, listen to me carefully. Hallelujah, because we're operating in integrity in the house of the Lord. If you were here New Year's Eve uh, and you have not yet received a raffle ticket, we want you to raise your hand. We want to get you a raffle ticket. If you were present, if you have not yet gotten one, raise your hand. We want to make sure you get one. Gavin, make sure I get mine. Okay, hallelujah. Amen, Pastor. I want, I want to win too. Hallelujah. I like a reward like everybody else. That's why I pray for you. But if I ever see your picture in the post office, I'm telling. I'm telling. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to make sure everyone get one. Now, what we're doing, in case you don't know, uh, one of the things that we were supposed to do, uh, the, the anointing was just so heavy, so we didn't want to quench the anointing to do it, uh, but uh, it is free. We have a raffle. Uh, uh, that night, we did not get the raffle off. We have a brand new 60, bring it on over, you guys, a brand new 65-inch color TV set, flat screen. So uh, if you were here and you have not gotten your raffle ticket, get your raffle ticket. It's absolutely free. It was just one of the things we wanted to be a blessing on New Year's Eve. And, and like I say, the anointing was flowing and we just didn't have a chance to get to that. But we want to go ahead and give it away now. All right. Okay. Have they been instructed what number to call? <laughs> Hallelujah. Are we all good? All right, hallelujah, amen, and, and Lifeway, we give her, so we don't want nobody, and those of you watching by broadcast, we don't want you to think that we sold tickets to do this, no, we just, it was just a way to have some fun and be a blessing, amen, we, we don't sell tickets at Lifeway Church, we don't do that, hallelujah, amen, it's the house of the Lord. Okay, we ready, Kelly? All right. Oh, y'all can't, I ain't pulling because you no, don't pull. I pull. All right, because I, I want to win, so I can't be pulling. <laughs> did, everybody get, did everybody get a ticket? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. All right. Oh, Dwayne, over here, Miss Edna. You got to be here. You have, you have to have been here New Year's Eve in order to get a ticket. All right. Yeah, I got to shake it up again. Miss Edna, you got your ticket? Shake it up good now. All right. I am shaking. Look, spinning, right? Like I'm cooking. All right. I got too many. All right. Last three digits are three, five, zero. Three, five, zero. 
They might have gave some away in first service. So we gave some in first service. Maybe they didn't. They maybe back. they didn't stay. Last chance. Going once. Going twice. Three, five, zero. All right. Pull in again. What number am I getting? All right. Four, eight, seven. Four, eight, seven. Um, right? I told them to stay. We had a couple of hundred people in here from second service and we gave them tickets and they ain't, didn't come back for the drawing. All right. All right. Four, four, six. Four, four, six. All right, Johnsons. Sister Betty, all right now. Congratulations. Oh, oh he was which one were you? Oh, uh, four, eight, seven. Oh, yeah, I pulled him first. He was an overflow, sorry. Oh, yeah, we gotta, we gotta go with overflow. We have an over, a overflow department up top, so while you're here, we got people in overflow. And he was so working. He was an overflow. Amen. Let's give it up. Congratulations. All right. <laughs> now, Sister Johnson, you still gonna have to talk to him. You hear what I say, Sister Johnson? Now you still got to talk to Brother Paul now. <laughs> Praise God. We all good, family. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so uh, we got a message for you. And I think, boy, we had a great time at first service, and I think it will be a blessing to you. A very, very practical message very, very practical, and I think that uh, it will be an excellent message. Uh, God gave me a word, an excellent message uh, for you to start off this year, and uh, uh, I pray that it's going to bless your socks off. Uh, if you'll stand, we'll like to stand for the reading of the word. We like to do that, just giving honor to God. I want to call your attention to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and we're going to begin reading in verse 1. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, a time to die. A time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time of embracing and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep silent and a time to cast away. A time to rent and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made, that is God, everything beautiful. Say everything in his time also he has set the worlds in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end Father God may you bless the hearing and the reading of your word Father we pray that your spirit would move through the aisles and Holy Ghost have your way in our lives minister make your word plain today as we humble ourselves before you. 
We thank you, Lord, that we had a heart to find our way to your house today. Those that are watching by various forms of social media, bless them wherever they may be. And Father, we'll be ever so swift to give you all the praise and glory. And those that agree said, <coughs> amen. Let's lift our Bibles as we give our confession of faith. This is my Bible. I believe what it says. I believe what it says about me. I believe I am who it says I am. And I can do what it says I can do. I am more than anointed. I am more than appointed for such a time and a season as this. I will be blessed by what I hear and what I see through the Word of God. I will never be the same. I will never, ever, ever, ever be the same. But I'll be changed through the mass, through the inconstructible, indestructible, never failing, ever living word of truth. And I'll be ever so swift to give God the glory and give God the praise. And those that agreed said, amen. You may be seated in his presence. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. <clears throat> As we begin this year, 2024, we have declared and by petition have sought the Lord through the word that I believe God has given us for this year, the year of suddenly, to be ready in season and out of season to be prepared to do God's bidding in the earth, that we would not only be blessed, but that we would please God in all that we do. Uh, I verily, really ever say this, but I am going to say it because it is ever so important that uh, we are all in one accord and on point. I really uh, uh, want you to pray for me and yourself as you receive this message. It is entitled Seasons. It is entitled Seasons. I, I, I would be able to stand here and teach this message and preach it and as if it is just a average message that God has given me. But I would like to yield and be transparent and say, this was probably one of the most difficult message I have prepared for in a long time. And I think it's because of the fact there is so many truths to be found in it. And the truths are really simple truths, but they're profound. And so I pray that uh, as you receive it, as I have received it, I freely give unto you uh, that it would bless you. And it would bless you in a way in which uh, uh, it would come to you in a very simple way, that you re receive it, and that you would also be able to deal with the challenges of it, because it will challenge you. It challenged me in preparing for it. Um, it was one of those kind of messages because it's one of these messages that I believe that is designed to exhort you, to meet you where you are, but its design and purpose is to bring you somewhere. Because as we said, we're living in sudden times, which will require us to make some sudden decisions to be followed up with some sudden moves, some sudden actions. The message will work for whoever works it because it will take faith, but it will take the faith that God has made available to each and every one of us in this room, each and every one of us watching by various forms of media, each and every person that's in, in the overflow right now. God will meet you right where you are. You will be able to see this crystal clear without even looking at that TV that Paul just won. You'll be able to see this in the spirit, amen. I know he brought it up there, amen. <laughs> I want to call your attention to Luke. Go with me, if you would, to Luke, the gospel of Luke chapter 2. One of the reasons that I say that it was so challenging, God gave me some scripture in defining seasons. We won't just define seasons, 
but we're going to actually talk about how seasons work. We just read over in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, God says to everything. How many things? Everything. To everything. That means you, everything that you see, to the very day from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, to everything, there's a time and a season. That means that there's a designated time and there's seasons attached to it, just like the year. Right now it is year 2024. We are presently in winter. We will soon be in spring, followed by summer, followed by fall. This year will be divided into seasons. And a culmination of those seasons is going to bring about a time period, and it's called a year. Go with me. Are you there, Luke? Chapter 2 and verse 48. Say amen when you have gotten there. And when they had saw them, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. Now this is actually Mary, uh, the mother, the woman that was favored by God and the angels to carry Jesus, to give birth to the Son of God. And Joseph, Mary's natural husband, they had came in for the year of Passover to celebrate the Passover. But it was time to go, so they packed up the caravan and got all the camels and donkeys and wagons and everything in line, and they began to head back home, in this case to Nazareth, leaving Jerusalem. After a while, they realized that they had left Jesus. Any of you ever left your children at a birthday party or family gathering and realized you got halfway home and little Johnny wasn't in the station wagon and you had to go back and get him? Anybody? My wife and I, we left one of our kids one time. And then she turned around and told me, you got to turn around. You got to go back and get so-and-so. I wasn't quite like Joseph. I said, do we have to? But anyway. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so they suddenly realized that Jesus wasn't with them. So Mary approaches Jesus, and Jesus replies to, to him, and he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Would ye not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the same which he spoke unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom, stature, and with favor, and with God and man. So here we have this setting. Mary comes to Jesus. Jesus has been in the temple discussing the kingdom of God with the Jews, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees of that day, which was the business of God. And he meant that literally. And we have been taught well, so we know what was he discussing, the kingdom, the government. Because God had an issue with the Jews at the time because of how they were treating the people. And when I say the Jews, meaning the Pharisees, Sadducees, the Sanhedrin at large. And so Jesus began to discuss and debate with them the kingdom of God. I thought about this story, and I realized that at the time that Mary was coming to him, asking him this question, Jesus says, no, not that I was about my father's business. In other words, he assumed that she would have known that, because he was. And she literally said, I didn't understand that. We're going to talk today about times and seasons, and namely seasons themselves, and different aspects. But I realized that Jesus was in a season of his life, beginning the ministry, beginning to proclaim and decree that the kingdom had come. 
and his very natural mother and her husband didn't even understand. It does say Mary kept it close to her heart. She was waiting. But Jesus had entered into a season that many around him were not ready for that season and was not in that season themselves. Many of you who are sitting here right now have entered into 2024. You are in a given season in your life. But like Jesus, you're going to find out just because you are aware that you are entering into a new place, into a new season, many around you may not understand. And not only will they not understand, they won't quite get it when they see you operating according to that season as was Jesus. The season of preparation, the time of pruning, to cut off, cut back parts for better shape or more fruitful growth. Namely, in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, it talks about Jesus says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He says, those that abide in me can do a lot. Matter of fact, you can bring forth much fruit. But he reminds us, without him, we can do nothing. There is a time in your life that there will be pruning that they'll be cutting back. But it is not to diminish you as a producer of God, as who he called to bear fruit. It is actually to maximize you. It is to make room for new growth. It is to make room for new territory. Maybe God is calling you in business or maybe in your career, in your field. Maybe you're moving to a whole nother position. Well, with that, you're going to have to encounter people. As a matter of fact, God wants to bless you, yes. But how you're going to get there is actually going to require people. God blesses you, but God also does it through people. And if you have not realized already, it will require people in even order to, uh, sometimes in order to get where it is that God wants to position you. God's going to have to confer favor on you. And they're going to have to see it in you, even if they have not been in the season that got you there. Are you listening to me? The time of testing. Our joy is independent of our circumstances. Thank God that we have joy that cometh from the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And it is going to be through his strength that you're going to be able to get through the seasons of this year. we got four natural seasons. I submit to you that these are not by accident. When God set the uh, uh, things in heaven, he set them in order. There's an order to the way in which this earth operates. Genesis talks about it being a circuit. I believe that there are going to be these four major seasons that we're going to have to go through. And we're going to break this thing down. We're going to set up strategy and a system to get through this. We're going to be kingdom-minded. We're going to take a kingdom approach so that we can be where God wants us to be, when God wants us to be there, so we're not late and we be on time for the blessings in our life and in the lives of our families. Amen? Amen. Time. There's only so much time that each and every one of us have. And within those periods of time, we have seasons. We have began this year with a new season, a new opportunity, new doors, faced with new decisions, time of being hid. When we, I won't get into it. We'll look at it a little bit later. But in the Greek, this is chronos. It's a waiting period. One of the things we're going to have to understand that just because it looks like we're waiting and nothing is happening, something is always happening in the earth. How do we know that? Because it's a day that the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. And even when we're waiting, we're going to find out it doesn't mean doing nothing. Waiting on the Lord means that you're actually anticipating. We're going to find is getting ready for what it is that God wants you to do. In the kingdom, there's never an idle day. I know people retire in the natural, but I, I'm not even retirement-minded. 
I don't even believe retirement is, is, is biblical. I get retired from a job, but I'm talking about retiring from the call of God in your life. There is no retirement because when God called you, he called the eternal spirit in you. And your spirit, watch this, does not get tired. Your spirit is fervent. We got to give the body rest. We got to give the mind rest. But our spirit is fully intact. And we're going to find out our spirit is fully capable of going through every necessary season. I want to call your attention to Psalms chapter 37 and verse 9. For evildoers will be cut off. But those who wait on the Lord, they will inherit the land. What does that mean? We just got to understand, we're living in a, in a time, in a day and age, and it's always been this way, but I believe that because of the times and seasons that we're living, they're being more apparent. Things are being manifested suddenly for what they are, because there is a, a, a period and a time of exposure, amen? God is exposing people. God is exposing things. Are you with me? And so, and it's happening suddenly. I told you this a month ago, before we even got to New Year's Watch, that it would be occurring suddenly. And it's going to be one thing after another after another. But if we take care of our seasons, we're going to be all right. I said we're going to be all right. So we got to understand what he is saying here. Uh, the evil doer will be cut off. But those that do it, the word of God and follow God, the word of God says we will inherit the land. And what that simply means that we're living in a day of suddenly that, watch this, you can't have one foot in the house of God and one foot in the world. You're going to have to make up your mind where you're going to stand. And you're going to have to be consistent about what it is that God is calling you to do in order to accomplish your season. You can't be on one week, off the next week. Folk don't know what you're doing. You don't even know what you're doing. Are you listening to me? And we're going to have to take a stance, and we're going to have to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord as much as we know that our labor is not in vain. And if that goes for one, it goes for all. We've got to think, got to quit thinking somehow we exempt or, or we're special. That doesn't apply to us, and this doesn't apply to us. That's why we're living in a day and age that there are people right now. We're going to find out that there's those that, that are warm. They're not hot. They're not cold. And the reason they're warm is because they want to uh, 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 water down the Word. They want to make the Word uh, so relative to their selves, not necessarily the kingdom of God, not say doctrine, not necessarily doctrine. We're going to have to come back to, and we should have never left, but we'll be talking about that not, if not this week, next week. We're going to have to come back to sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. See, when you get off sound doctrine and you start adding and taking away or, or taking away the twist, talking about this doesn't mean that or, or you can interpret it this way or that way, then you're off point. The Word of God says then you're evil. Jesus said, not, not, not apostle, Jesus said, be hot or cold, for if you're lukewarm, I'll do what? I'll spew you out of my mouth. And the reason a lot of people want to be lukewarm, because they want to dress the way they want to dress. They want to wear what they want to wear. They want to act the way they want to act. They want to go here and go there and do this and do that. They have no constraint about themselves. And we'll find out folk going to get in trouble being where you shouldn't be doing what you shouldn't be doing, acting in a way in which you shouldn't be acting. Well, you know, and, and you know, they use this, the, the, the excuse where Jesus went out amongst them. I'm just trying to reach. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't you lie on Jesus. He ministered to them. And he was a son of God by the Spirit of God. The Word of God says that we ought to be transformed before we go. We're not to go and act like them and do everything that they're doing. That's an excuse to, to feed your flesh and do what you want to do. I'm, I, somebody need this because I'm trying to move on. I really am. Hallelujah. And here's what I want to do today. I want to encourage you. There's so much more on the inside of you. You're so much better. And you're able to do it. Yes, you can do it. And I want you to know that's why God gave you four seasons. He's given you enough time to grow up in the year. Oh, somebody ought to say glory. 
He, that's why he gave you four seasons. He didn't even say you had to get it all done this season. There's season after season after season, but the will and the purpose of God is that you would reach a place of completion by the end of the year. In other words, when you look back next year this time, you're not the same person you used to be. Oh, come on, somebody. You may not be everything you want to be right now, but thank God you ain't who you used to be. Uh, he says, go with me if you would to Psalms 135 and 6. Wait. Waiting involves an expectation based on knowledge and trust. When I say I'm waiting on the Lord, again, it doesn't mean you're doing nothing. But when you're waiting, it's because you have an expectation, and that expectation is based upon knowledge, namely being the Word of God, and you're trusting Him to bring it about. Are you there at Psalms 130, 5 and 6? Wait, look, for the Lord. My soul do wait, and in His Word do I hope or expect. Hebrews 6 and 9. My soul waited for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning and say more than they that watch for the morning. In other words, there's going to be people in your life. They're going to be watching in the morning and you are already working in the evening. Uh, we won't get to it today, but next week when we talk about seasons because it's so intertwined. There are three categories I'm going to break down. There are going to be regular or common relationships in your life. Then you're going to have to recognize there are seasonal relationships in your life. And then there are divine relationships in your life. The regular relationships in your life, we'll talk about and we'll go through scripture as to how to deal with them. And then there are seasonal relationships in your life. The people were just there for a season. They weren't meant to stay. And then there are divine relationships in your life that you want to do everything humanly possible to pour into them to keep them. You want to fight for those relationships because those relationships will, will be uh, uh, pivotal to you getting through the seasons and the times, periods of your life. However, what we must understand is that as we go through waiting in expectation, waiting with the earnest desire for God to do what he's going to do in our life, in the midst of the season, there will be those that are watching the morning. What does that mean? Uh, they are watching morning when you're already uh, at noonday or at, at, at 5 p.m. You have been moving forward. When you leave this place, as you pursue the seasons in your life, those of you who are watching at home, as you begin to pursue the seasons in your life, you're going to find out you suddenly begin to move ahead. I want you to write this down. I purposely did not put it in my notes or on the board. I want you to write this down. I must find something to look forward to each day. I don't care what it is. This is how you put the Word of God to work. The Word of God talks about desire, expectation. It is important that no matter what you're going through right now in your life, I don't care if it's looking forward to when you get home having a bowl of soup and doing a crossword puzzle. You have to have something in your life. L young folk, listen to me. You have to have something in your life that you can look forward to. It helps keep the hope aspect in your life alive. One of the worst things that can happen to a person, you have nothing to look forward to. When all your work, all your life, listen to me, been there, done that, as someone once said, I got a t-shirt and a hat. Are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Watch this. 
You have to have something to look forward to. If all you're doing is working, because you're going to find out there's seasonal people in your life. I know they may appear regular, and some of them even think they're divine, but they're not. They really, uh, watch this, they're regular, but they have a seasonal attitude. They quit long ago. They quit working long ago. They gave up long ago. They quit running life long ago. And you're going to have to find some people like you that have a desire in life to do something so that you'll know who you're running with. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. If you decide, watch this, you understand this. You've already started it. If, if you decide that you're going to start working out, you're going to start eating right, doing the right thing, then you ain't hanging around folks. Every time you look up, they ordering pizza and, and they going all to the mall eating junk food and all that. You're going to have to back off. What is the best way to deal with that? Just don't go to the event. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. So you're going to have to have desire. You, there's going to have to be something you're looking forward to. And all you got to do is ask God, what is it that you can give me, Lord, to look forward to? What have you given me to look forward to each day? There's going to have to be something. So when you wake up in the morning, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, when you wake up in the morning, the first thing on your mind, it's not your enemy. It is not money. It is not the stress. It is not the strain. It is not what you haven't done. It's not your back. It's not your foot. It's not your knee. It's not your head. It's not the doctor's report. Oh, somebody ought to say amen in here. Hallelujah. So you're going to have to find out what is it that you're looking forward to? What is it that's motivating you? Amen. Are you with me? All right. So now watch this. Seasonal preparation. Let's talk about how do I get ready? Because what we're trying to do is real plain. We're trying to get through each season. We're taking this. We, we're going to eat this elephant one bite at a time. We're dealing with each season. And if I deal with each season, I'm going to have a successful year. Listen to me. Because see, here's, here, here's the part right here. Because if you have one real bad season, it can mess up the whole year before you get to the second season. Am I talking to somebody? You ever had a year and you had one bad summer and you crossed over into the next year, but you still short from the summer? Amen. See, we're going to have to be on point. That's like right now, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I have a book entitled B Biblical Stewardship. Uh, it's in a bookstore. If you want to get it, it's online if you like to get it. But in that book, I talk about the fact that uh, we would be moving into times. You must have a budget. You must be able to balance things in your life. Why? Because things cost more than they have ever cost. And you got to have a budget so that you know what to believe God for so you can go to God and get the favor for. Watch this. You have not because you ask not. And most folk don't ask because they don't know what to ask for. Hallelujah. I've had people, uh, you know, call me and ask to borrow some money. I, so I say, well, well, how much is it? Well, uh, I think it's about, uh, you know, I'm concerned the moment you say you think about you don't even know how much you need. And the reason I'm saying that, because if you wanted to borrow $200, but, you know, you really needed 400 have I really helped you? Do you know what to ask God for this year? Oh, I'm coming at you. Do you know what to ask God for this year? Do you know what to ask him for financially? Do you know what to ask him for mentally? Do you know what to ask him for physically? Do you know what to ask him for? Or are you just sitting in a season and time is going by morning after morning and you have not created a, a, a balance of desire and expectation to believe God to bring you from where you're at to where you're going? Oh, this is going to get more better. This is going to get more better. Watch this. this we're going to talk a little bit about preparing and, and moving forward in this season. Just this season. We ain't talking about the whole year. Just to, look at somebody and say, just the season. season. Your influence is limited. This is when I say this thing got, got, got challenging. But it was all good. Nothing that fasting and prayer couldn't do. Listen to this. Your influence is limited. During a season of preparation, you may have influence, but it is limited. 
as you move forward this year, as you move forward tomorrow, and pursuing the accomplishments of this given season, the next three months in your life, you're going to find out your influence is limited. Because there are people who are you're going to try to communicate to, they not hearing what you got to say. Because they're not where you're at in your season. They may be somewhere else in their season. Watch this. This was the problem with Jesus and his mother Mary. She, he said, don't you know what I'm doing? I'm about my father's business. It's the season and the time for me to pursue what my father called me to do. And she didn't understand. She was in the season of going home. But she kept it in her heart, which means that she'll catch up later with this season. Some people are just not going to be where you're at. And, and watch this, you are going to frustrate yourself if you bent on keep on having conversation with people that's not listening to you. They already got their mind made up. And watch this, they want to pull you into their season instead of understanding you got your own season. And if you don't know what your season is, you can get sucked into somebody else's season because you don't have the influence that you ought to have over them. They're going to think that they got the influence that they need over you, and they can influence you to do what they want you to do in their time and season, and they may have given up, and you just started. Oh, this is some good teaching. I'm preaching better than you amen it right now. You better know your time. You better know your season. And if you're elderly and you believe God is giving you years to get something done, quit hanging around folk talking about dying. You better get around some folk talking about living and going places, going on vacation and, and doing things, amen, enjoying the rest of their life, talking about going to church, volunteering and, and mentoring the young ladies and young men. Quit talking about oh, how you trying to avoid life and all you want to do is have fun. You ain't got no assignment. You confuse. That's how children think, that all you can do is play video games all day and there's nothing else to lie. You know better than that. How long you been alive? I said, how long you been alive? I'm coming at you suddenly today. Season of preparations, your gifts are restricted. Oh, my God, my God. See, see, it, it's a humbling thing to know your influence is limited. But when you start pursuing, this is real talk, real talk. When you start doing the things of God, you're going to find that there's restrictions and limitations. But you know what you're going to be like? You're going to be like a boat that's caught in a storm in the middle of the sea and the waves are raging. What you're going to do is learn how to navigate. You're going to navigate through regular people, seasonal people, and divine people. You're going to learn how to navigate through all of them. Because every time I say to you situation, every time I say to you circumstance, that means people. You don't get into a situation. You don't get into a circumstance where there's no people. Huh? All right. Listen to this. In the season of preparation, your gifts being, begin to emerge. See, this is where Jesus was. When he was in the temple talking to the elders, his call, his gifts, talents, and ability, they were beginning to come forth. But they were restricted. They were restricted because the people weren't listening. They weren't trying to go along with who he was, what he was called to do. Watch this. But they are limited by your circumstances or your environment. It is normal during this time to be in a situation that is not ideal for your gifts to function. I want you to get this in your spirit. Do you know what it's like to be gifted and not be able to use your gift? 
to be capable of doing some, something, but you can't do it. But the Word of God says your gifts will make room for you. They will make room for you, watch this, when you are appropriated within a given season and time in your life. That's why Ecclesiastes 6 is a certain time and season to do certain things. But here's the diabolical part. In Ecclesiastes, what it's really telling you, there's a time and season you ought to know when to do stuff. <laughs> if it's a time to laugh, why are you crying? If it's a, watch this, if it's a time to be silent, why are you speaking? <laughs> if it's a time to mourn, why aren't you mourning and why are you rejoicing? See, there are some things that ought to make you sad, that ought to grieve you. See, see, they, they, we're living in a day and age where it, 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 it is just so warm that people don't, they, they're out of touch with reality. There's some people you can't even share a burden with them because they think you, something wrong with you. But Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that are laid, laid, uh, heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So that indicates that God says, I'm going to give you a burden. But a burden is meant to be carried over a bridge. You can carry it over the bridge. You can get through the storm. You can get through the season if you know what to do and when to do it. But let us not be dismayed just like Jesus if, if his gifts and, and his call could not be functioned in that moment. Jesus didn't let it go. Jesus understood that I'm just in a season right now. A waiting period. There are times where you're going to have to learn how to wait on the Lord and know what you're doing while waiting. Uh, I want you to go back to John, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Luke 2 and 48. I want you to take a look at this, same, same account with Jesus. Verse 50, and they understood not his saying which he spoke unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth. In other words, he went back. Not only did he go back, he went back subject unto him. In other words, he, here it is. You got, got to catch this revelation. He's in a temple, the Son of God, talking to the Sanhedrin, talking to all of these people about the kingdom. I know they got to be marvel what's coming out of his mouth. Mary shows up and says, boy, where you at? Don't you know we're going back home? And he says, no, I'm about my father's business. He understood that the season had began. But there was a waiting period in the season. Oh, listen to me, listen to me. It has to be that way. He had to know because he wouldn't have said, I'm about my father's business if he wasn't time for him to be about the father's business. But yet she turned around and said, boy, what you doing? It's time to go home. And yet the verse says that he went to Nazareth subject unto them. Say wisdom. You're going to have to know what to do, when to do in your life at a given time. Because certain seasons can be lost. So Jesus here says, okay. Because he was a man in authority, according to the rules of this earth, that his father set in order, he understood that that's all right, my season ain't up and my time ain't up. So he goes back. The next thing I need to understand when we talk about preparation of, of seasons, the season of fulfillment. Until time, listen to this, until the time that the word came to pass, Seasons of fulfillment, that is. The word of the Lord tested him. Listen to Psalms 105 and 19. Until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. So, so what am I doing during the waiting period? What am I doing in each season of my life? I've got to know the word. I'm going back there. I have to know the word and believe in the words that I know in due time and due season. What scripture are you standing on? What verse are you standing on? Are you, are you journaling? Are you petitioning? 
We talk about monetary and financial budgets, but what about your spiritual budget? What is the spiritual budget of your life? Are, do you have a budget? Do you have a spreadsheet? Do you have a plan? Do you have a journal? You're on a journey, family. You have begun a new chapter, 2024, and you're blessed to do so. Many folk didn't cross over. There are a lot of folk that got left in time and in season in 2023. You're blessed to cross over. And God is giving you the most precious commodity in all of the earth. It's called time. Ugh. You can lose money and get money back. Let's keep it 100. You can lose friends and get some more of them. But what you're not going to lose and get back is time. What you're not going to steal, what you're not going to waste is my I see some of y'all didn't want to answer that. I said, what you're not going to let people waste or steal from you this year is your time. And you're going to have to realize who's who in your life. It ain't going to be an easy thing to do. But here it is. Whether it's easy or not, all you're doing is facing reality. You know why? Because it is what it is. If they don't like you, they don't like you. Why are you still trying to make them be your friend? They don't like you. If they hating on you, they hating on you. If they ain't going to forgive you, they ain't going to forgive you. Why you keep trying to do things to make them feel better? They already told you, I'm on another path. I'm going somewhere else. I'm not going where you going in your time and your season. What are you wanting? My grandmother used to say, don't want to be with somebody that don't want to be with you. I wish I would have adhered to all of that when I was young. That part, amen. That big part. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm happy. Hallelujah. I'm excited. Hallelujah. I'm excited for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah! Revival in the house! The devil is alive! God is on the throne! Prayer changes things! He's the Lord of today, yesterday, tomorrow, and forevermore! I'm excited because it's a day, it's a time, it's a season that the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm glad anyway. And I'm moving on. And we're in sudden times. I'm here telling you now. And I want you to write it down. Even if you don't get it now, I pray that you get it later. I hope that it will be like a time release capsule in your heart. Like Mary. She didn't get it then. She carried it in her heart. And it blew up later on. She realized who her son was. Watch this. I'm trying to tell you right now, we're in times of sudden. That you're going to have to wake up to relationships. I got to cross over here because this is where we get ready to go. You're going to have to know what's a regular relationship, what's a seasonal relationship, and what's a divine relationship. And you're going to have to understand you have only so much time, only so much resources, and you're going to have to know which relationships to pour into. Oh, uh, watch this. I'm maximizing ministry in my life. There are certain things that I'm moving into 2024. I'm not doing that I did in 2023. I can't afford to pour into relationships that are not mutual. Oh, my God, my God. All right, it's going to sting a little bit. If they don't care about you, you quit wasting all your time and resources caring about them. I said it in the church. I didn't say it alone. Jesus said it another way. Either you're for me or you're against me. In other words, Jesus said either you're going with me or you're not going with me. Choose this day. Make a choice. Bust the move. (laughs) 
you, you know what I'm talking about right now? Overcoming your emotions. That's why I say it's hard. Oh, it hit me just like it's hitting you. I, I'm just acting a little bit different because I've had a week to get used to what I'm telling you. <laughs> hey, watch this. I was stunned too. And God says, why are you still treating that relationship the same way? They already told you countless times. They didn't act a certain way. They didn't show you. When people keep telling you things, listen. And if they keep repeating, they say, believe them. I said, believe them. You know why you ain't believed them? And why you still there? Treating that regular, treating that seasonal relationship like it's divine because stuff they didn't say it, ways that they didn't act it, they didn't told you things, and they lied. And you believed them. And it's okay. You wanted to, you wasn't, it wasn't that you was after lie. You wanted to believe it because it made you feel good. There was a soul tied to it. You had been maybe in it for a while. You known them. Maybe they related to you. Maybe you worked with them for 20 years. They can't have turned seasonal on me. Yeah, they did. Because of the situations and the circumstances of this world, people are changing. Are you guys getting some out of this? I feel a draw, which means that there are people that are getting, it's going to get more better. Watch this. Go with me if you would. I said to Psalms 105, 19, it says, and the word, and the word of the Lord tried him. God is faithful to his word. Seasonal seasons of fulfillment is a result of being in alignment with God the Father. Alignment is a very simple concept that has to do with our soul attitude towards God. You are going to have to check your attitude. You're going to have to come to oneness as to where you are with God the Father. You are going to check your attitude. You have to check your attitude because can't nobody do it for you. And you can't let anybody alter your attitude because they want to tell you off. They want to act in a different way. Look at somebody say, hold your ground. You have got to determine what your disposition will be. It is important to have a strong disposition. When I say disposition, I'm referring to your attitude, yes, but your attitude is spectrum. It is it, it center spectrum to everything in your life. And an attitude will determine your disposition. Your disposition has to do with your emotions. It has to do with your tonality, your physiology. It has to do with everything within you. Scientists have figured out that your emotional stability or instability has a lot to do with your heart and your brain. Literally, in, and namely how they are synced together and how they work together, which helps produce a lot of the good health or bad health in your life. And so you're going to have to adjust your attitude. Keep adjusting it to it's right where it needs to be with God. You can't let other people give you a bad attitude. Maintain your disposition. When you maintain your disposition, then watch this. You're able to zero in on your perspective. Oftentimes, I can't zero in on my perspective because I have lost control of, lost touch with my disposition. My emotions are all over the place. I have got to get a hold of myself emotional. If I have low self-esteem, I need to address it. I got low self-esteem. What do I do to improve my self-esteem? If I got low confidence, what do I need to do to have low confidence? If I lack opportunity, why is it, Chris, that you lack opportunity? Why is it everybody is just ignoring you? Nobody won't give you a, a, a chance at the job. Nobody will let you into the school. After a while, I am the only common denominator with this. Go to God and say, God, I know you want me to handle this season. And time is a ticking. 
And so, Lord, I know that you know me. And because you know me, you know what it is that I need. And you said I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. So I need some strength right now. I need some encouragement right now. I need some motivation right now. And I didn't try people and they can't give it to me because you have given me assignment in due time and due season and you alone can get me there. So I looked to God, not just to open the door, but to get me through the door. Our assignment and our circumstances. Oh, it's getting ready to get good, family. <laughs> We're going to end with this. Oh, this is going to be a great series. I'm getting ready to give you a mother load right now. Can we go deep? I'm getting ready to give you some stuff. And it's okay. You're going to take a snapshot of it on the screen. You're going to write it down. And it's going to take you about a week to sink in. But when you hear it, it's going to bear witness to your spirit. I got this straight from the throne room. You ready? Here we go. <laughs> in the time of preparation, our circumstances are restrictive. In the time of fulfillment, they are ideal. In the time of preparation, our circumstances dictate our assignment. In the time of fulfillment, our assignment dictates your circumstances. <laughs> I said, wow. But this brought me back to at the beginning when I step into season and time and start doing what God told me to do. Watch this. My influence is limited. My gifts, watch this, are limited. And I asked God, how? Why is that then? But watch this, just like Jesus, he never lost faith. He knew that, watch this, the bell had rung. And I was in season to do what it is that God told me to do, even though other people didn't want to receive my influence, didn't want to receive my gifts, talents, and ability. I'm still right where I need to be. So here God gave me revelation on this. I want to repeat this. In the time of preparation, circumstances, say that's people, conditions, situations. All right are restrictive. So that means right now, you need to know what season it is for your life. Because it may look like the doors are closed. It may look like, watch this, the people you need to work with are limited. It may look like uh, they're restricted at every turn. What you have to offer is not being received. But keep in mind, within the same time and season, when they get fulfilled, they will be ideal. What does that look like? Right now in your life as you're starting this year off, and you're setting your goals and ideas, and you'll find out what God is telling you to do, and you say, Lord, I'm going to do it. When you get ready to do it, you have a set of circumstances here. The circumstances are going to push back. But because you made your mind up that you're going to do what thus said the Lord, say favor. favor. God is going to give you favor. If I've ever found out in the last year or two the purpose of favor, favor is to overcome situations and circumstances. When you overcome through favor with the situation and circumstances, then all of a sudden you're going to get to the end of the season and everything you went through is going to look ideal. Say faith. It's going to bring your faith all the way up for the next season. The challenge is when I don't handle what I need to do right now and I have to deal with situations and circumstances, we're only human people. They wear us down. And then when I get ready to enter into that next season, I'm so whipped. And my faith isn't where it needs to be because I haven't seen the favor of God in a minute. God, oh my Lord, there's so much that I want to share, but I'm limited by time. Let, let me tell you something. Don't you let nobody lie to you about the importance of starting a new year. Don't, 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 don't you let nobody lie to you. There's something about firsts. There's something about beginnings. 
And when, watch this, you make it important to God, God will make it important to you. And God wants to favor you. Say favor. favor. God wants to grant you favor. I learned something. <laughs> Can I share this with you? Now, I told you we were going deep. I was going through something once, and it happened, and I talked to God about it, and then he answered me. Then years later, I went through something again. And in each of these occasions, I needed God help. And I called out to God. But at the beginning of the situation, I didn't call out to him. Maybe you've been there. The way that I did when I got in the middle of it. Am I talking to anybody? There's something about human nature. We think that we can do certain things on our own. It's not till we can't do nothing else that we call on him. And I never forget, I called God at the very beginning and said, Lord, and the Lord spoke to me. And I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm just transparent. The Lord spoke to me. I didn't do what he said do. I got sidetracked by the situation and the circumstances. Because watch this, the devil heard me praying, the devil watched me moving. And so, you, you know, it, it had, remember, circumstances has to do with people. So the people eased up. So I kind of thought, well, maybe God, you know, he fixed it. God said, no, I told you, Chris, to do something, and you didn't do it, which was cut them off. And I didn't cut them off. They acted, they acted a little bit better in the moment. So I said, I'll keep them. Because it was easier to keep them than get rid of them. Getting rid of them was going to take some work. It was going to take some emotional investment. I didn't feel like that. God said, I didn't ask you how to feel. I told you what to do. And sure enough, I didn't do it. I turned around and they bit me. Took a big hunk out. Then it happened again. Different situation, still dealing with people. But this person seemed like legally there was no way out. God told me what time it was. And this is what I found out about favor. I didn't do that time, what God told me to do. I got in the middle of it and I called out. And I said, Lord, Lord, I, I, I repent. Hear me? Because this is going to rock some folk religion. I told him I repent, Lord, I'm sorry, I should have did it. And the Lord said, you're forgiven. And I said, Lord, can I have favor that I was going to get a month ago. He said, no, the season has passed. I'm telling you the truth. God said, that season has passed. And it grieved my heart. And then I said, Lord, will I, I said, Lord, would you grant me grace and mercy? Oh, I'm smart enough to know how to approach God. Even when I miss it, you repent. I repent. And I told God, I said, I said, well, can you show me some grace and mercy to get through this? He says, I will. But you're going to have to stay in it a while because I won't give you the grace and mercy till next season. Oh, you came to the church of truth. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, oh. See, the truth you know will set you free. So I take seasons now real serious. Still love situations, people, circumstances, people. But I understand if I don't follow what God says do, it won't go good for any of us that are involved in the situation, that's involved in the circumstances. I, I, I got to say this. My closing. The word of God says, know those that labor amongst you. I'm going to start with me. I don't care if they are apostle. Those of you watching me, and I know I'm ministering to a lot of people, go to a lot of different churches. But a lot of these churches, 
they're fleecing the people. They're not teaching the people. They're not teaching them what to do. As if somehow they can do what God called them to do without putting work in it. Work is still necessary while we're alive. And work in the church is not a bad word. Some of you go to churches where people are pastoring you and they're pastoring you because they didn't want a job. It was an easy way to get out of work. First ladies, it's more than a fashion show. It's more than being pretentious. Quite frankly, there ain't nowhere in the Bible where it says there's a first lady. It's not even biblical. We made that stuff up. Deacons, elders, we got to start being who it is that God called us to be. We got, I want you to go back, and I challenge, this is the word the Lord gave me, I challenge individuals to look up under Titus. He set the church in order. He gave it to the apostles. Then and now, and apostles are to ordain bishops, are to obey ministers, are to ordain elders in order. And we have lost order in the church. There is no order. <laughs> Folk do what they want from the pulpit to the door and ignore order. I submit to you, and if you hear me, hear the passion in my voice. I'm not mad. I'm mad at the devil for lying and duping a lot of people. But I also love what I'm saying because all we got to do is repent. And life wins guilty of some of what I'm saying. Church is more than coming, meeting, and feeding some hungry people. It's a whole lot more than that. It's about bearing fruit. It's about souls being saved, lives being changed, and altered for the glory of God. It's about you fulfilling your purpose and your destiny, being excited about life for real, helping people, being joyous, being a person of some consistency. People can count on you to do a thing, and it's not just about how you feel. The gifts and talents become active because our actions are mixed with our faith. And now we're a blessing, not just in this room, not just in this building, not just in the church you go to, but we're a blessing wherever we go because favor is upon us. Give God praise, give him glory. Oh, you ought to do better than that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lifeway, what time is it? It is offering time. Family, we want to thank those of you that join us by various forms of social media. We couldn't do what we do without you. We truly do. Thank you for trusting us and sowing a seed into this ministry. If you would, continue to cover it with us and partner with us in this year, 2024. We'd be ever so grateful. Family in the house, in the overflow, let us lift our tithes, our offerings, our devices as we give God praise, as we give God glory. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to sow seed into the kingdom that you would be magnified, you would be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen.
now receive from the open windows of heaven to you be the glory and all the praise in Jesus name with every head bowed every eye closed saints praying believers are believing if you are here today and you have not made Jesus the Lord of your life you want to make him Lord and it is without question the biggest decision you'll ever make in all of life if you're here today and you want to make Jesus Lord and Savior of your life, just raise your hand where you are. You don't have to go anywhere at this moment. God bless you. Maybe there's others. You want to make Jesus Lord of your life. Maybe you're here today. You want to rededicate your life. You say, I want to do this year right. I want to, I want to take care of business in time and in season. You want to rededicate your life. Just raise your hand where you are. I'll see your hand, brother. I see your hand. God bless you. Maybe you're here this, today and you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Just raise your hand where you are. Maybe you're here today and you're looking for a good church home. Consider it a privilege and an honor to have you a part of Lifeway Church Ministries. We need a church home. You need a covering. This is not a time to be uncovered. You want to make life for your church home. Just raise your hand where you are. God bless you. God bless you. Maybe there's others. Listen to me carefully. If you've raised your hand for either one of these invitations, maybe you didn't raise your hand. Listen to me. Listen to me with your heart. But right now your heart is being moved. I want to let you know that's the spirit of God. It is not the devil. The devil would never want about anything good it is God in your soul moving your soul to respond I gave the message but he's doing the knocking if you did not respond you're not quite sure which invitation to respond to I want you to step to the aisle come to the altar if you raise your hand step to the aisle come to the altar I want to pray with you I want to pray for you come on family let's encourage them as they come hallelujah come on family God bless you God bless you come on family let's encourage them God bless you maybe there's others God bless you Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> God is going to do what he promised. He's going to do what he promised. He's a God of promise. I want you to just raise your hands. I want you to just repeat after me. Father God, I ask Jesus to come into my life, to be my Lord, to be my Savior. Sit upon the throne of my heart. Rule, reign, have your way from this day forward. 
Satan, I denounce you and every work of evil. Holy Spirit, have your way from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would follow this sister here, she's going to bring you to a place in further ministry. Let's encourage them, family. Come on up, brother. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody else? We'll do this all over again. else come on up come on up you don't have to leave the way you came anybody else for those of you who don't know me I don't quit fighting until we absolutely win we'll do this like miracle service we'll be here at four in the morning come on up there you go oh we'll do oh Come on up. That's what the altar is for. That's why God gave it to us. He wouldn't have gave it to us if we didn't need it. Stretch your hands towards our brothers and our sister. I want you to just lift your hands and I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Father God, I ask Jesus to come into my heart to be my Lord, be my Savior, sit upon the throne of my heart, rule, reign, have your way from this day forward. Holy Spirit, lead me and guide me. In Jesus' name. Before you guys go, God is going to bless you. He's going to be your peace. And young lady, let me tell you something. As much as you need him, he's going to be overwhelming in your life. He's going to be more than you could have ever wanted. Not just need it. He's going to show you. See, here, here's what's been troubling you. Look at me. Here's what's been troubling you. Now, the reason I'm saying this is so when you leave, you can say, God, you spoke to me. That man told me what was really bothering me. You know what's been bothering you? You don't have an example of your future. You don't know how it's going to turn out. And the devil has attacked you so you done got to a place you don't know how you're going to make it through each day. You're not lonely anymore. You got God. You got God. And he's got you. And he's not going to let you go. He's not going to leave you and he ain't going to forsake you because that's not how God works. We're talking about the God we love and serve. Amen. God bless you. I want you to follow this brother. He's going to bring you to a place and further minister to you. God bless you. Oh, give God some praise, would you? be seated we'll have communion now that blesses my socks off see because this is doing real church that's real church souls come first lives come first that's more important than anything we do in here is loving people what has happened to the church I don't get it <laughs> and really my soul Maybe I'll feel better after I just say this, get it off my chest. I am so grieved right now in this region. The politics, the superficiality, 
and it's just not our region, but it spreads through Southern California, Northern California, all of this country. That's why we're so messed up. We forgot about how to just treat people. That is not democratic, it's not Republican, it's ain't got nothing to do with politics. You know the word of God says, how do you say you even love him? Who we ain't never seen and can't love our brother and our sister who we see every day. Every day. That's not God. And I pray this year, and I pray that you pray with me. And don't be moved by my emotion. I'm a strong man. I ain't, I'm not weak. Don't, don't trip. <laughs> don't, don't trip, okay? I just love God. And I love what he loves. And God loves people. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. As we prepare our hearts for communion, go to 1 Corinthians with me, if you would, please. And we're going to look at verse 11. We're only going to look at two verses because we actually taught a lot of it. So we're just going to go right to the word. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Are you there? If not, look up on the screen. You, you need to leave your hands free. You can look on the screen. Uh, I want to just read... Two verses, what Jesus said. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24, it reads, And when he had given thanks, he broke and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. And when he supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament. Listen to this. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. In my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. I bring this up because we're living in a day and age, and I'm seeing it all over media, hearing it all over the place. People are coming up with different concepts. Word of God said it happened in the last days. They're going to fall away from doctrine and truth. Some folk are saying that all you got to do is read the gospel. Some are saying all you got to do is read the New Testament. Some are saying the Old Testament ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with the law, but that it might be fulfilled. And the Gospels is the testament of his work. The New Testament is what he died for as the testator. He gave it to us. And it says it right here in Scripture. He gave it to us with the purchasing by his blood. All of the word of God is profitable and good for teaching, reproof, doctrine, and correction. Don't let people in this time come up with a new doctrine. It's happening right before our eyes. People are just coming up with some, I've never seen like anything like this in all my life. That's why people are wilding out doing stuff. We, 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 we have gotten removed from doctrine. We've got to stay firm. I'm sorry if, if you're mad at me, but the Ten Commandments are still the Ten Commandments. They still are. Just because we're in 2024 and we're in America, they don't change nothing. Amen? Let's bless this time of communion. Father, we thank you, we praise you for this sacrament. We call upon the name of Jehovah Mishkeda, the God of transformation. May you transform these elements out of their natural use into supernatural use. And Father, if there be illness, that there will be healing. If there will be oppression, that there will be freedom. If there be captivity, may there be a releasing through the promise of your word. In Jesus' name, amen.
have a covenant through Jesus Christ which gives us access to the throne of God I'm not going to teach on it right now but I, I just want to throw this out there I was doing some just personal study this week one of the challenges because we only relate with what we know so when we think about the throne we think about this chair no that is not God's throne. 
God's throne is in heaven. We think about when we say earth is his footstool like it's just this marble of earth. No, it just simply means that that's where he rests his foot and under his foot is what he has authority and dominion over. In other words, the statement is not literal, it's figurative. So when we say we can go before God's throne, we're actually going before the first heavens where he dwell. And when we go to his throne, I want you to see this. Give me one minute while you got communion in your hand. Whenever, this will change how you see God. Whenever you sin, whenever you miss it, you go before God, picture yourself bowing under his feet. And because we are a part now of the body of Christ, where he sits in all of the galaxies of the heaven where he is that no man has seen. We receive all of the power of God, the creator, to forgive us. And he has passion of that which is under his feet. That's why we bow. That's why we bow. And I caught this revelation praying the other day. I said, I said Lord, you tell us to bow. I'm looking at Daniel, I'm looking at the and then The reason we bow, because that's where we should always be in submission. And the sad part, if we bow, it's because we got out of position. And so the bowing is actually a physical reminder of where we really belong. So if you sin in that new covenant that he died for in his blood, 1 John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our sin, our faults, he's faithful and just and when we say just meaning that the supremeness of who he is is so consistent <laughs> he couldn't do anything other than but what he says to forgive us that's how much he loves us that's how much he loves us and he says he'll cleanse us of all unrighteousness as if we've never done it. And then he'll make sure that through creation, when he declares it and decrees it, it is to be remembered no more. The only one that can bring it up is you. But as far as heaven's concerned, it's been forgotten. Isn't that beautiful? the body of our Lord and Savior the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we already gave invitation right I tell you, boy, I'm somewhere else right now. <laughs> it's a good thing, though. Trust me, it's a good place. Woo! I want to thank you for your patience, your prayers, and let's just pray before we leave. Father God, we just thank you today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for loving us, keeping us, holding us. And Father, we're going to need you when we leave here. Oh, how we're going to need you. Oh, we need you, Lord. Help us, Lord God, in those lonely places. Hide us in the cliff of the rock. Help us, Lord, in Jesus' name. 
On your way out, stop at the table. We have the instructions for Daniel Fast. Starts today. I know how excited you are. Daniel Fast. Amen. All right. God bless you. Thank you.